Welcome to this week's episode of Love Sub, and as you can see, we're packed up, but we have no place to go. Like everyone else, we're quarantined, and unfortunately, many events that we had planned on doing have been canceled for quite some time. Including our international rally in June. And we were scheduled to do a presentation uh, at that rally. And uh, so they decided to put together a virtual presentation instead. So this week's episode is going to look a little bit different than our normal love sub and things because the format's going to be a little bit different. Um, because it's a virtual presentation. Exactly. But it will be somewhat similar to episode number nine of Love Sub. And so if you're a longtime viewer, you'll see a lot of similarities. Yes, but we expanded on it and made it a little bit more detailed. So with that, we hope you enjoy this week's episode. We'll see you next week. Welcome to this virtual presentation for the Loveland 2020 International Rally. Exactly. Like everybody else, we're here sheltered at home, um, but we're hoping to be able to give you some information that will make your air streaming trips even better once you get out on the road. Right. Hopefully that'll be very soon. Right. The title of this presentation is how to best organize your tow vehicle for air streaming. Right. And a lot of people talk about what to do and what to carry in your Airstream, but they very rarely address what to do with a tow vehicle. Right, and uh, with regards to the tow vehicle, everybody talks about payload and towing capacity and tires and all that other stuff, but what we're gonna show you is how to properly organize your tow vehicle to make the most out of your Airstream adventures. And we may add a few extra things that we put in ours that might not be in yours. Exactly, so we hopefully you'll enjoy the presentation. Let's go ahead and begin by meeting your instructors. First of which is you'll note every time we have anything in the door pocket that's paper like a guidebook or our log books, we'll cover them in plastic. And that's so that when the door is open, the rain's coming down. They don't get wet. They don't get wet. So our, everything's covered in plastic. We keep all of our campgrounds. Every campground we go to, we keep the uh, map. Yep. And we'll make notes on it to say like here, here is another one. Site 21 sucks, close to dumpsters, bathhouse, and playground. Was able to remain hitch though, kids central. So. Well, it depends if you like kids. We, right. <laughs> we took the time to mark that we didn't like kids. <laughs> but anyway, that's kept in the truck so that we have access to it. If you know Cindy and I, you know we'll always have a growler and a howler, which is a half a growler. Howlet. How, yeah, so howlet. They're, they're called lots of different things. That's always available. We'll have our 2020 Blue Beret membership guide, along with two small American flags, should we ever come upon a patriotic event that we need to wave flags for, or if we visit, say, a gravestone or something like that. We'll talk about this. We'll talk about it when we go to do our safety gear, but under here, we'll have a few books safety vest, hat, and fire extinguisher. Here's a public service announcement. Make sure if you've got a kid fire extinguisher, you check the recall. We had three fire extinguishers in our house that were not, um, they were part of the recall. We sent them back to kid, they sent us new ones. So just get onto their website, make sure if you've got a kid fire extinguisher, it was not part of that recall. How do you figure that out? You put in a serial number or something? Yep, exactly. There's a, there's a uh, actual, this lot number. You plug that in and it'll just tell you it's easiest in the world. Good question. So make sure that happens. All right, moving to the driver's seat. Some of the stuff we maintain in our little box here. Where does that box go? This is in the center console. First of which, eyeglass repair kit. Okay, ah, that's yes. a good one. I've had a lens pop out of my sunglasses on I-95 down in Florida and we were, Cindy was able to repair that. I do keep an infrared temperature sensor. I do check the tire temperatures, uh, both the truck and the airstream. Even though they've got temperature sensors, I still do it anyway. And of course, we do not back up the airstream even an inch without our walkie talkies. Literally an inch. If we have to go backwards, we have a rear guide. We will, that's one of our standard operating procedures. 
Um, you can use cell phones, but you don't always have reception. So we use these little walkie talkies. I also have citizen parking citations, which I issue as needed when something <laughs> irritates me, which is a good thing. Also in this little bin, Also, we'll keep our checklists, um, both the departing checklist and the arrival checklist. You'll notice that they, the lanyards hang from my neck. They're upside down so that I can read them. Yep, and they're different colors. And we'll have contact information at the end of this uh, presentation. If you uh, are interested in what our checklist look like, you can email me at lovesubbin uh, at gmail.com and I can send you the checklist and of course our vehicle log that we maintain every piece of data on both the truck and the Airstream for example the Airstream currently has exactly 75,742.1 miles and it's also for gas Phillips everything we do I know that my wheel bearings were packed at 67,535.1 miles so they're gonna be doing about 2,000 miles the maintenance to have a decent maintenance uh, program, you have to keep decent records. Anyway, that's kind of the driver's side. There's two more things I want to show you that are very important. Handheld CB radio. Now I know in this time of day and age, you guys are probably saying, ah, oh, come on, handheld CB radio, kind of get with the times. You, you know, know, there's ways and all that. Yeah, no, this thing's great for listening to the truckers when things go bad. You know, if you're just driving down the road, nobody's really talking on these things anymore, like in the 70s. But nowadays, um, it's helpful. The truckers will tell you what lane to get into. What lane exactly? Or definitely, and it's entertaining. Right. Yeah, it can be. <laughs> Finally, I have my weights and measurements. That's important. Yes, because the time that you want to know that your height of your airstream is nine feet four inches, or the height of your truck is six feet six inches, is not when you're going into that six feet five inch garage or bridge or bridge or we also have weights, um, total rig length, 41 feet, eight inches, gross weights, etc. All that is kept on this card so that instantly we can reference it. And it's laminated too. Oh, you got to laminate it, <laughs> seriously. Why wouldn't you? So our newest member of our truck family is Otto the Autopilot. And the wings are from United, courtesy of my brother who flies for United. And so he sits in the back. Our little Itaki lunchbox. And why, do, why do we have that? That's uh, so we can cook hot lunches or breakfasts if we need to. But it doesn't cook in the back, it cooks in the front. But uh, this is just where we store it. And moving on to the front, we have napkins, which there's always a use for napkins. And they're wrapped in plastic so that they stay dry. Also, we have wrapped in plastic is our hazardous waste book, which comes in handy in case something blows up and we want to know how far we need to get away from whatever it is. Plus, it's always just entertaining on the road to see what people are carrying in their trucks. So I have my lumbar pillow, which kind of keeps things comfortable. Our 2020 road atlas. Do we have a Garmin as well? Yes, we have a Garmin as well. And, and Waze. we have an iPad and Waze and Google Maps. I don't know, but there's just something about holding a map. I think we'll always have a map. Yep. And so let's see what we got in here. We have a red and black flashlight. Yep. Why do we have the red one? The red one is for night vision so that we don't mess up our night vision. Let's see, we have a pair of scissors which are good for opening snacks or cutting things that you may need scissors for. And I don't know why we have this, but it's a puke bag. It's the puke it. Well, it's never been used, but that's seven look, total. Look and one other thing, you have to have Auburn. Cup holder. Cup holder uh, inserts. So that's the inside of our truck. All right, my assistant refuses to cover this portion of our uh, equipment in our truck, but I think it's quite important because there was an incident 
two years ago that we needed to discuss. But that's our device. It wasn't my incident. It was my incident. That's our device. It's a Little John. I bought it off a of Sporty's Pilot. Ooh, it says made in the USA. Cool. Bought it off a of Sporty's Pilot Shop. And this is designed for pilots in light civilian aircraft who may have to go to the bathroom. And okay. so we have that here. Clearly it's made for a guy to use. Yes, it is made for a guy, but <laughs> we didn't just fall off the turnip truck here. I purchased the female adapter and we even maintain a slug of toilet paper, quite valuable these days for, from an old MRE, I believe, so that the female adapter can be properly put to use. Leave no detail out. All right, as you can tell, I've loaded up the truck and I just really did that for this video. We are not going anywhere, but set everything in order, which basically means a place for everything and everything in its place. So I loaded this up and I have a load plan in the back of my log book. I have what I call a load plan. And you're gonna give us a picture of that, right? And I'll have a closer picture of what this load plan looks like, but it shows where each and every item goes, okay? And you and, do it the same way every time. And this is a good tip. Now, if you're a full-timer, it's probably not the greatest tip in the world because you load up and you stay that way. But if you're a weekend camper or somebody just getting ready for the season, this is invaluable. Because then you know where everything is. If you had to go look for something, you could actually pull this out. But it is super easy to put everything in your truck. That's the first part of this. The second part is stratification of where you put stuff. Okay, I have three tool bags or tool containers. One of them is right here. This is the stuff I use all the time. Most often it's with easy reach. I can get it in seconds. Makes sense. The next one is the red tool bag in the middle. And that contains stuff that I might use on occasion, but not every day okay that's the stuff that i might use every couple of days or so more heavy duty stuff well things like maybe a, a, an electric my voltmeter is in that red bag okay because i'm not going to use a voltmeter every day but scissors a screwdriver yeah i'll probably use every day so it's right there finally underneath that blue bin as you can see are my less used tools my endoscope my um soldering iron things like that some of your power tools maybe <clears throat> yes things that would not get used except for maybe once or twice every couple weeks or every month or so. Or when we had to do something. Or something major breaks. That's kept relatively inaccessible. The Dutch oven sits on top of it there. So it's, it's you know, it's that stratification. We do the same thing with our first aid kits. We have our big red first aid kit there, but the one with band-aids and other stuff is kept right inside the airstream. So that if we cut ourselves during the night or something I like that. I think you can see it. There you go. Okay, the final part of this presentation is gonna be the safety equipment that we have stocked in our truck. So you can see I've got my vest, my reflective vest, and my hat. So all of our safety equipment is kept in this bin. Let's see what we got. <clears throat> First of all, an entrenching tool, better known as a shovel. So that's for in case I have to dig something out. It's also doubly used for shoveling coals um, doing fire pits, stuff like that. Never hurts to have. We always carry some rope. You never know what you might need some heavy duty rope for. Solar blanket. For shock. Yep. That goes sort of with the first aid kit. Yep, we have one in our first aid kit as well, but these are, you know, when you run a marathon or half marathon, they usually give you these. Some heavy duty toe straps with the hook too. That's a good one. We have our jumper cables. Yep. Extra pair of gloves. Some more light cord. A radio with non-battery power so I can... Is it solar or wind up? It's a, it's a wind up. Well, it's not really a wind up, but it's like a dynamo thingy or something. I don't know, how does it up. work? <laughs> it spins and generates power. A bunch of different ratcheting straps you never know when you'll need ratcheting straps road flares how old are those 
<laughs> well, they were two dollars and twenty-five cents for two of them. I think that tells you how old they are. Mm. When did they expire? Yeah, that's a good question. So probably what we'll do is buy more of these and we'll set these puppies off and do some training. You might want to contact the fire department before you do that. Fan belt. Our first aid kit. Yep. So this I is our, you know, we have one major first aid kit up top there, which includes things like our tourniquet, alcohols, cold compress. This is the immediate stuff. This is the bandages and the stuff to uh, stop bleeding. It's got gloves inside. And then finally, we have the big heavy duty trucker, three series. That's pretty heavy looking. Warning truck, yeah, this thing weighs a ton. Three series uh, warning triangles. Wow. So that you can set those things up. Well, you're about as safe as it can be. Well, we try to be. Plus, finally, some Siulum light sticks. All right, so that's our safety equipment. We hope you keep your safety equipment well stocked, well and ready. And easily accessible too. Easily acceptable, and hopefully you'll never have to use it. Just by having it probably guarantees it. Well, that concludes our presentation. Right, I hope you enjoyed our virtual presentation because it was kind of fun to go through some of our stuff and see how well it was organized. Yeah, we were so bummed. Uh, I think the rally organizers have done a great job doing the best that they can do. And even right. setting this, putting this little virtual uh, rally presentation, I think heads up or thumbs up to the rally organizers in a very difficult situation. Right. Um, but we hope that this was able to help you guys out a little bit. Right. Uh, we'll have contact information right at the end of this video so that if you do have a question or a comment or want to know something uh, that we didn't cover here or we left unclear, we'll have uh, some of our content and in contact information as well as we can be found in the Blue Beret, of course. For further information. So, hey, we hope to see all of you all down the road sometime soon. Yep. If you see the Love Sub 1062, just stop and say hi. Stop and say hi because we're looking forward to getting out there and seeing you guys down the road soon. Thanks for uh, being a part of our presentation. Thanks for watching.